Hello, everybody, and welcome to week five of the Capsule Cast. I am your host, Dorgard, brought to you by my co host, Oasis, and our guest this week, a Derp supporter in Fiora. Please uh, give a warm welcome. Go ahead and say hello, guys. Oh, I'm finally back on the cast. It's great to be back. Uh, hey, first time doing this sort of thing, and I'm also a member of the stats team. Alrighty then. With that out of the way, are you guys ready to get into match one then? Sure. Yeah, let's go. All right, getting started. We have the Grand Tour versus Budokai. Uh, some notable things to say about this match off the bat. This is GT's first win, so uh, finally getting to see another team coming out of the ditch here in week five. So to get this match started, we have Kid Goku for Budokai and Shin Shenron for GT. Uh, GT making a big swap from Shin from his uh, key plus build to a eternal life defense plus three build. So almost immediately we see the results of that, of that switch, seeing as how he basically rammed his face into Kid Goku and him struggling with the attack plus two defense minus one and his natural defense minus really did not help against the tank. Uh, and funny enough, Shin probably spammed more of the four bar B2 on this build than on his key build. Uh, but the stats will be a little more specific there. But ended up being a pretty good uh, fight, but Kid ended up tagging at one bar left. Sin having only lost one bar, bringing in N Goku, who comes in and uh, with a style of strong boosted savior ult, uh, slams him for 13k. That defense really coming in handy here. Uh, Sin takes out a bar of N Goku before tagging on his last bar himself. Uh, with GT Goku coming in on his melee build to fight the super uh, key plus N Goku and manages to finish him off with about 2.5 bars left. So Cyborg Tao, the man who cannot lose, comes in and cleans up GT Goku, only losing one bar in the process, forcing Pan to come in. And a lot of B2 trading here, uh, both designed for that, so not a surprise here. Uh, in the end, Cyborg uh, Tao is kind of keeping it up. And he ends uh, tags with two bars left. So, or uh, sorry, Pan tags with two bars left. And Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta comes in to take on the last bar, Cyborg Tau. So Tau goes down, but he does manage to take another bar off uh, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Kid Goku comes back in with his last bar versus uh, the one bar. And uh, he ends up tagging again. So not quite enough to finish him off. He going back out. Not ready to die just yet. So early Goku comes in and finishes off Super Saiyan for Vegeta. Uh, but he does end up losing two bars himself from the spam combo back. Pan comes in and combos early Goku uh, without having to use the ult. And then Pan finishes off the uh, half bar Kid Goku with Sin Shenron still sitting in the back. So GT getting their first win. Um, with uh, only a few bars left, so certainly was a good fight. Uh, Budokai ended up uh, having Nam out this week, and early Goku really just kind of didn't show up with his uh, 2.5k damage. But overall, like Cyborg Tau, 83k, uh, and a very even spread on GT. I would say it was a, a good showing from GT uh, of, of finally showing off what they've been kind of sneaking in these last few weeks. So, Oasis, what did you think of this first match? To start off with, I definitely have to give my congratulations to GT on their first win. It was an excellent performance by on their part. Uh, I can definitely say we didn't expect Bukai to lose this one versus GT. But GT has taken into consideration that maybe their builds haven't been working. And they decided to try something new on Sin, Shinron, and it turned out for the best. Although, we have to make notice that in the past few weeks, he has been doing rather well not to say the best but he's done 40k he asked for more than that except for one week where he did 16 versus you know me that's not the point here we saw something a bit different than what he usually does and that was spamming his blazing storm and blazing storm does about 7 8k per you know hit. the fact that he was throwing those out you know four or five at a time really led to him building the lead that GT just capitalized on throughout the entire match. Not to mention the fact that early Goku just was not there at all. He could barely take out GT uh, for Saiyan 4 of Vegeta, but then he gets comboed out by Pan. It, it Honestly, I thought he may have been on a wrong build, maybe the wrong uh, AI Patara, but it was perfectly fine. He just 
was washed out spectacularly. It was something to behold, I guess. Uh, but I must commend Cyber Tau for at least trying to bring this match back. A6K is A3K, my apologies. It's definitely nothing to scoff. It appears uh, Oasis might be lagging out just a little bit. Um... Might be just a moment before he uh, kind of lags back in. So uh, just real quick, uh, Kid Goku, for the amount of tags he did, just <laughs> unfortunately didn't bring the damage. And uh, as said, uh, early Goku also kind of lacked. So, But otherwise, I think they did pretty well. Fiora, what did you think of uh, how the match went? I was impressed that they were able to get Pan and Sin to work because... A big problem with characters like Sin is that Trap Shooter is a really, really bad B2, as much as we love to meme about it. You know, he... I don't think he used Trap Shooter at all in that match. No, he, he was used, just using he used his it Blazing Storm. Uh, well, he, he used his Blazing Storm way more than he ever did before. And it shows, because he got GT that early lead, which just gave them momentum for the rest of the game. And Pan... Pan really shocked me. They, she did 55,000 damage. Before this week, she was at the bottom of the league, averaging at like 23,000 damage or so. So to see her do more than double her average and to just overall be pretty good, if you ask me, this is a new GT. Being able to get one of the problem children to actually work and getting Sin to use his good B2. <laughs> Yeah, it was certainly a good turnaround. Uh, Oasis, I see you have uh, reconnected. Are you uh, going to want to finish that? Uh, I thought you were kind of on. I would hope so, so long as my internet doesn't, you know, start to cut me out again. Speaking on what Bjorn was saying, actually, I definitely, I, I, sure, Pan did great. 52K. Can't, can't scoff at that. I don't think that was because of her, though. I think that was more because of early Goku not doing what he was supposed to do if pan does this again next week then sure we can probably say she's changed for the better but since we haven't seen a single change in her build since the start i'm very hesitant to say that it's her performing well versus her opponents performing underperforming this week so that's something we have to look forward to in, in the coming weeks Overall, yes yeah, I was going to say Just next week's a, a divisional, so your point exactly. is especially uh, important to see if they can pull it off again. Exactly. Hopefully, I mean, what I would love to see is Pan on key plus one or key plus two. Super plus two is great for the damage, but her with the, her with the Kamehameha, with a rush B2, being able to spam those more consistently, I feel like we'll get her more consistent numbers as weeks go on. Yeah, especially with uh, Shin no longer needing all the um, the key pluses, and now they've switched into the defense build, there are some more Pataras available for Pan, so it will be interesting to see what uh, they continue to do with her. Uh, did you guys have any exactly. final remarks on this first match, then? No, that's Nothing all. Nothing that I didn't add before. Nothing that I didn't add like, before. Get, get to match two before I lag out. I, I got you, homie. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to match number two. Uh, the first divisional of this week, uh, there were two. We have Derp versus Cinema. Uh, so this ended up being a pretty, pretty fantastic match to watch. Definitely a highlight of the week. Would recommend if you have not seen it. It is in episode one, uh, which came out on Monday. So we have Garlic Jr. with a boosted defense plus one. And he already is on a kind of all around, but mostly attack versus build. Versus Salza, who is similar to Shin, where he is an Eternal Life uh, tank build. So Salza really took it to Garlic uh, early, forcing a tag when he was at about half a bar left, with uh, being at a little over two bars himself. So great start by Derp. Uh, Salza really taking it to him. Turles coming in. Uh, they they he's still on his normal tank Eternal Life build, and they boosted him to have Light Body. Um, so right here is a, a very slow portion of the match, both with defense plus three, eternal life became very grindy on who could hit more B2s. Uh, Salsa ended up tagging at one bar and Turles was at just under two bars. So the champ comes in and decides this is not a week to mess around. Uh, hits an ult almost immediately on Turles after winning a clash for a solid 16k combo here. Um, 
which just absolutely destroys and takes Turles out. Gogeta comes in, and Gogeta was kind of the star of the show for Cinema this week, as you can see by the damage. Uh, and he took on the champion, and they really did trade a lot of B2s back and forth. Uh, the champ sliding through a Big Bang Kamehameha, a few Kamehamehas hitting back. Uh, ended up being that Gogeta managed to take him out with a bar left, uh, with Jiro coming in. So, Jiro's got one bar to take out on Gogeta, and um, this is just where it ended up being a, a little bit of a turnaround where he qu didn't quite do as good as they were hoping. Gogeta managed to nearly take out Jiro before finally going down. So we have a one bar Jiro versus a returning Garlic Jr. with one bar. Uh, and <laughs> Garlic just ults and uh, finishes off Jiro. So Devilman comes in and ults the uh, one bar Garlic Jr. for 15k. Always fun to see a Devil Might Beam. Uh, Fasha comes in and it goes quite crazy here. So we have both nearly at full health uh, going at it. Uh, and Sauls is still in the background for Derp. So Devilman throws out another ult, uh, gets dodged. In fact, uh, one of the times it's thrown out, it gets thrown out three more times here after Garlic Jr. Uh, she manages to jump into a tree and just save herself. Uh, so... Big fight going on. Devilman tags at one bar uh, with Fasha at two bars. Salza comes in and is unfortunately unable to get much damage off before going down to Fasha's Rage. Devilman comes back in, hits another ult, hitting Fasha down to nearly her last bar, and charges up to fire up another one, and Fasha just manages to combo down his last bar, giving Cinema the win in this divisional. But an exciting divisional, uh, as you can see by the stats. Salza had a fantastic week. Herky had a fantastic week. Devilman had a fantastic week so even with Jero lacking a little they they easily pulled him out of the gutter and same with on cinema side they also had a lot of good damage in fact looking at the team totals you'd be you'd be hard pressed to decide the winner uh, with 197k to 201k so oasis what did you think of this insane first divisional this week let's start off with i like to point out a trend in our current matches match one we had Cyborg Tao doing 83k in this match, we had Salza doing 81k and still coming out with an L. And mostly that was contributed by the fact that Jero only did 12k points of damage. It's definitely a shame that Jero didn't show up this match as he hasn't been performing as well as Derp had hoped he had been when they first picked him up this entire season. Hopefully they can turn him around, maybe put him on defense build like they did before, maybe put him on an attack plus one build, because maybe attack plus two is definitely too much for him to handle, since his melee isn't the fastest, I digress. I think the biggest thing here was Devil Man throwing out four Devil Might Beams and hitting with two. He got hit with a third one. I believe he would have won, since they were each 11k, he was down to Fosher by at least 16. So that plus another B2 or a melee combo would have gotten in the match, but it, it's, it's, it is what it is. I must mention also that Devil May, except for week three, in every single match he's thrown out a Devil Might Beam, he's connected with 50% of them. It'd be throw out eight, he, ta he hits with four. Throw out four, he hits with two. Throw out two, he hits with one, etc., etc. So that's definitely an interesting statistic to see uh, later down the line. Especially versus, you know, Bujins versus, you know, Resurrected Warriors uh, versus other teams with more evil characters. Hopefully you can capitalize on that later down the line. But on to the more uh, positive news. Gogeta doing 76k in this match is definitely impressive, but I think he falls again into the line of this is more of the build change that he had before he used to have super plus two now he has key plus two or was it because of who he was facing uh, gogeta came close in this match or went even essentially with hercule doing about 40 36k there having 36k knocked off of him and then he faced Ro. so my question to y'all is 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 gogeta's success here due to the fact that he was spamming more he was being more aggressive or was it because Jero? is Jero. That's a question for you viewers. I can't really say. We'll have to see later down the line. That's really, I, that's, that's all I have to say on this match. 
Certainly, yes. and I know we are planning to have a cinema supporter on next week since they have a second divisional in a row. So maybe we can pick their brain. Gogeta's been one of their worst characters. Uh, Gogeta and Zenkaya both just have been really uh, in the gutter as of late. So a surprise performance to say the least. Uh, but moving on to you, Fiora. Uh, obviously, uh, as a, a person with a heavy stake in this match, uh, give us your comments. Yeah, so Salza, like Salza, Double Man, the Champ, they all did great. Salza, he, you know, just look at the stats. He did eighty-one thousand damage. He put Derp in a massive lead. The Champ doing fifty plus thousand damage. He t dealt more to Cinema than he took. Double Man, he did exactly what we wanted him to do. Just use his Double Might Beam again and again and again. <laughs> the problem being Juro. He just completely dropped the ball and took away our lead because uh, he was down like 2,000-ish health by the time he finally KO'd Gogeta, which pretty much made it an even match. And considering who was left, it was not in Derp's favor because something that I had noticed is that Devilman tends to struggle a lot against tank builds because of their region. And because of, the, and because of how inconsistent he is with his B2s, it just gives them a lot more time to heal, and his melee... We don't talk about Devil Man's melee. He's not here for his melee. Yeah, yeah I, mean, if... I think most teams would consider Devil Man more of a gimmick character based around the ult. So, going into this match, I know a lot of people are a little surprised at Kibito Kai, and I know from lots of talks in the Discord server, uh, Jiro has been a more consistent damage number. So even with him going down, you still had a one-bar Salza and a three-bar Devil Man going into that final uh, group. Did did you maybe hope that Salza would have done a little better going into that that two-on-one against Fasha, even though uh, Devil Man did tag to help out with that? Yeah, we watching the match live. I was hoping Salza would end up doing more than he did to Fasha. I think he only did like half a bar or so before she just ping ponged into death, which ultimately wasn't all that much damage considering she's on she was on den days right she has defense plus two in den days correct yeah it was pretty much lost a lost match with how bad Jero did and who was left i mean don't get me wrong it was close at the end because devil man did bring it down to a bar so i have nothing to be ashamed about for the team it's just we got to get Jero working. Oasis, did you have any questions? I know I have another question or two for our Derp supporter here. Uh, I mean, besides the fact that, at least in your statement about Devilman being a gimmick character, I guess you would disagree <laughs> strongly with that statement because Devilman in the past has been a spamming king with his fork rush and, you know, for QB2, he has been very scary with his melee when on um, quick, fast, tech, serious. So uh, to say this man's a gimmick is definitely, I'm not on his team, but definitely insulting to his legacy. That's besides the point. Fiora, what is, what have you tried thus far with Jero? Like, what, what would you be open to? That's my question. Like you said, Jero needs to be fixed so, and soon. So... Pretty much the day after the week, you know, so the day after the week five matches, I looked into Android's testing to just see which AIs Jiro tended to do the best with and what he tended to do with those AIs. So we're swapping around his build a bit along with an AI change, hoping he does better in the future. Fair, fair. Is, is, what's... If you don't mind me asking, what kind of tendencies are you looking for then? B1s, B2s, melee, all of the above? Uh, Grab. I've noticed that the. Exactly. <laughs> uh, something that I had noticed is the best AIs for him are the ones where he tends to use his B1s because, say what you will about Bionic Punisher, that is a terrible B2 that really holds him back. But his B1s are pretty solid, you know. Finish sign, you know, a stackable buff that lasts until you fire another another B2, and False Courage, which is just com complete power body for a limited time. So we're aiming towards that, see if that helps him at all. 
Yeah, I mean, Fair we've enough. seen a lot of teams do some uh, crazy turnarounds. Sentai completely turning Birder from a spam or melee character to a tank uh, these last few weeks, and it really showing. So uh, Oasis has definitely got good merit to ask this, as uh, really we have seen some, some characters completely change it up here within these first five weeks and turn themselves around. Uh, I mean, Oasis, you kind of stole my question, I won't lie, but I, honestly, it is a, it's a big question. Uh, and I did want to clarify when I, when I say gimmick is, is more of when people look at Devil Man, the main thing they talk about is Devil Might Beam. But yes, he is a very strong character with two two-bar uh, B2s, and we, we've seen that he can do everything. Uh, it's just unfortunate that as a Dragon Ball character, some of his stats are a, a little lower than, than maybe uh, people would like, but he's certainly shown that he can make up for it. Uh, as you were saying, Oasis, about the build changes on Dr. Jiro. Right, right, right. So, I mean, if they want to go in the direction of B1s, that all the power to them in that case, they might be interested in going key plus two with no, well, no, double minute asset, key plus one. Uh, sh not for B2 purposes, but I mean, it seems like potentially that B1 characters have a nice affiliation with key plus. Maybe that might be the reason you would go that route, especially if he stacks finish lines to throw a very strong B2. Uh, as a, I, might, I just want to get one final question is that Vegeta, I'm not Vegeta, Gogeta versus Jiro. In your opinion, do you think Gogeta did as well as he did versus your team because Gogeta was you know, better or because your team was slacking, but you know? Not fully there. I'd say it's a mix of both because it did feel like he was a lot more aggressive once Jiro hit the field, and Jiro, he was just completely off his game. He was throwing grabs at the wrong time. He fired uh, his full power energy wave when Gogeta was moving, which is just a guaranteed miss. So I think it's a mix of both those aspects for why Gogeta crushed Jiro. Understandable. I only have one last comment in that, to my knowledge, Hercule did not throw out any present bombs. Not a single present was thrown out to match. Maybe that's something to do with it. I mean, it's a lack of free 10k damage that interrupts the opponent. Uh, tomato, tomato. Just... Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if he had thrown out one more present bomb. Versus Gogeta. Difference is what made. We could go on what ifs uh, for hours. Yeah. Uh, it certainly was yeah, strange. I mean, what if Salsa had actually KO'd Garlic at the beginning of the match? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, he did come right. in and finish off Jiro with an ult, and who knows, maybe Jiro could have done a little more uh, had he had the chance honestly, to go against a different target. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if you ask me, the best thing Jiro did was die to Garlic's ult so somebody else didn't have to take the hit. <laughs> true oh, i did I want to point out oasis i know that's really bad to say to one of my characters but he <laughs> can you blame me yeah Not really i was gonna say oasis they do have a second defense character they can do each team is limited to two characters with the defense plus and uh supreme kai tends to be on a melee build so they could throw Jiro on like dragon spirit defense plus two and some other shenanigans but that'll be something we'll have to see uh in this upcoming week uh, and it'll certainly be something people are keeping their eye out for, because uh, discussions on Jiro have been quite plentiful since the preseason. It has. That it has. All right, are you guys ready to get on to match number three, then? Yep. Of course. <laughs> Fiora's are like, uh, yeah, let's get off this match. I don't want to see that zero anymore. Uh, agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great match. I can't take anything away. So moving on to match number three, we have Rugrats versus Kaiju. Uh, certainly a fun match when you look at potential height changes from uh, three feet to like 30 feet. So another match, but granted Rugrats will tend to have that. So starting off, we have Raditz versus Areli. So a spam build versus a super plus build. Um, and Certainly quite an interesting start, to say the least. Two characters we don't always see starting for either team. So Aureli uh, takes Raditz to about one bar uh, before tagging at two bars herself, an early tag, to say the least, uh, having Super Saiyan Goten come in, um, and he immediately super clashes Raditz present bomb. 
uh, his present attack, to say the least, and uh, loses 10k off that. So Raditz actually tags on his last bar after uh, doing this clash, and Nappa comes in to a two-bar Goten. Uh, Nappa forces the tag out of Goten when he gets to his last bar after taking it, uh, and loses one himself, so one for one bar uh, causing a tag. Cyberman comes in and has another good week. Uh, just like against Kid Buu, he takes out another just trump card of a team um, coming in and taking out Nappa and still having 1.5 bars left. Uh, so King Vegeta comes in to replace Nappa and finishes off Cyberman. Uh, there was a lot of jokes in chat about Cyberman being Nappa's kid, so he did outdo his dad on this day. Uh, so after King Vegeta takes out Cyberman with losing minimal health, Aureli comes back in at nearly three bars, uh, blocks a King Vegeta rush ult, uh, and then a good little spam battle ensues with Aureli tagging again, but this time with half a bar left, uh, bringing Trunks, Base Trunks, to come in and fight the now two-bar uh, King Vegeta, um, who whiffs another savior, or uh, who then dodges a savior ult. So King tags with one bar left, bringing Scouter in, and he comes in and handles his future son-to-be, uh, or, sorry, he gets handled by his future son-to-be, uh, bringing King Vegeta back in, uh, and Trunks ends up tagging with just slightly over one bar, so he will come back in with two bars later. Uh, Rayleigh comes back in and fights the now-transformed King Ape Vegeta, uh, and manages to take him out with a max power mode 12,000 ping B2. So, Raditz, being the last member, comes in, uh, takes out Aureli pretty quick before being taken out by the returning Super Saiyan Goten. So, overall, lots of tags, a very tag-heavy week in general at this point, as you may have noticed, but a good match overall, I would say Rugrats, um, certainly showed up Cyberman with another impressive performance. Maybe damage numbers aren't great, but in terms of who he got that damage on was impressive. And uh, Kaiju really put in work too. Uh, Scouter Vegeta uh, pulling a complete opposite of his 80k week with another 8k week. So sad days for him. Oasis, what did you think of this match? Well, it was it was a match to say the least. To start off with, uh, Tosh said this once this twice hopefully he'll listen to me but please stop starring Aureli sure she came back did all her bursting with ping but for the love of everything just to start put her in like a third slot with savior oh it frustrates me so much to see her start but I digress more importantly Scouter uh, always on going on to Kaiju Scouter underperformed immensely oh my goodness I don't think I've ever seen this man do less than 40k in my life. Here he is doing only 8k. I mean, sure, he was worse. He was against his son, Kid Trunks, who's essentially a android with living flesh. And so the best Rugrats shocked. member. And the best. I mean, yeah. Eternal Life, keep us to whatever you want to throw at him. This man's going to still do 6k regardless. But the fact he got shut down that easily to say the least shocking to me and that i feel like led to was the nail in the coffin which is in in this match a uh, cyberman doing very well uh, in fact he and he his bill switched his bill switched week four in fact uh he was on defense plus three uh week one two and three then changed week four and ever since then he's been doing 40k uh, and that for Cyberman, that's very impressive, especially versus Nappa of all people. Person who's been touted as Kaiju's best member, I, you, you definitely would never guess that. Hopefully, he continues to make waves as the season goes on, getting 40k, 42k, etc. etc. Uh, overall, just really unfortunate that Trunks went off like he did, goating being able to spam his Kamehameha Hall when he did versus King Vegeta. King Vegeta, not on Savior this week, was very impressive. I must say, him having the scaling aspect with Indignation when he transformed is definitely something that should have been ace in the hole, should have brought him the win. But really tagging twice definitely kept the match in favor of Rugrats. The overall great planning by Rugrats, except for really in the first slot, <laughs> Oh, that frustrates me so so much but yeah just good job 
Good job, Rugrats. It'll continue this. I definitely believe so, as long as Aurelia and Trunks are in the match. Who's to say? They'll probably take it all the way to the end. My yeah, I, I would have to agree. Uh, but I think part of the reason they put Aurelia up front is to add to the versatility of their team, making it harder to predict. Because, I mean, it, it, it in teams that play every person at the front, even their savior characters, it can be impossible to predict. So, Fiora, what did you think of this match then? I thought this was a pretty fun match overall, not just because of the idea of, you know, oh, you got the little kids in the league, only three foot tall versus the 100 foot kaiju monsters. But it was also fun because of that aspect where there was a lot of family relationships between the characters, like, you know, people joking about Cyberman being Nappa's son, Trunks versus King Vegeta, Trunks versus an earlier version of his father. Even his uncle in Raditz. And over uh, Goten versus Raditz. Yeah, there was just a lot of fun to this match. And overall, it was pretty even throughout until Scouter versus Trunks. Trunks just swept them up. There wasn't really much Scouter was able to do. And that just completely turned the tide of the battle from being pretty even to pretty strongly in the Rugrats side. And the Rugrats were pretty smart with their tag game because they had Aureli hop in when King Vegeta was an ape. And for those of you who don't know, Aureli just, she can stun anything, even apes with her melee, which is just the perfect way to counter Kaiju's giant forms. So overall, I'd say it was a pretty good match, just... Scout could a lot more. Yeah, pro performance beside, I think the amount of tags Rograx didn't just gave him a little too much regen on top of the healing, uh, even though they had no eternal life focused uh, tank this week. Do you guys have any final remarks then on match number three here? Are you guys ready to get on to match number four? Stop putting Aureli in the front. That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we need to get to match number four. Oasis is going to pop a blood vessel at this point. Oh, for sure. All right, match number four. We are at the halfway point with Androids versus Cold Kingdom. Uh, an anticipated match, a non-divisional, but still a, a kind of powerhouse match as uh, both teams looking to really make a mark on the league this season. So we have 16 versus King Cold. Both teams probably most solid melee uh, monsters going at it. Uh, and another good point, both had probably some of their stronger characters out in Android 17 and Frieza. So it was definitely going to be an interesting one no matter what. So surprising start here with uh, 16 actually just destroying King Cold. Um, he only loses one bar and manages to take him out, forcing base form Cooler, who's on a spam build to come in. Um, and he ends up ulting at the wrong time while 16's going for a rocket punch B2 and gets taken uh, and gets that canceled while taking a nice fist to the face. So 16 really putting in work this match uh, just off the start there, getting the lead going. Um, but as 16 does eventually go down to Cooler, but Cooler is at about 1.3 bars left by the time 16 goes out. So Super 17 comes in and uh, ults instantly. Uh, which uh, takes out Cooler, bringing in Raccoon. So Raccoon comes in, ready to bring in the Doom, um, and he actually ults Super 17 back for about 15k. Uh, Super 17 tags at uh, 1.5 bars left, because he just doesn't want to touch that anymore. 19 comes in and just absolutely rushes down Raccoon, not giving him any time, um, and takes him out, only losing one bar himself. So... Meta comes in, the final member, uh, to, and uh, takes out 19, losing only one bar. Uh, there's a lot of B2 shenanigans, lots of misses here. Uh, Super 17 comes back in and takes uh, Meta Cooler down to about 1.5 bars before being taken out himself, leading to the final member of Androids versus the final member of Cold. A full health cell comes in, he has Savior, and uh, Dilly Dows a little bit, but just really only ults Meta Cooler for 12,000, uh, finishing the match, allowing Androids to take the win. So Cell's number are not from a bad performance, but basically all he did was one combo into an ult, uh, hence the 12.28K there. So overall, uh, it was a highly anticipated match, and the start ended up making it a, a little bit worse off for Cold King than I think most people expected, but overall was was still fun. Uh, Would have been interesting to see both teams kind of big trump cards in uh, 
third form Frieza and Android 17, since they both tend to do a lot of work. But I'd still say neither team was missing an important member, and it was still a great match in the end. Uh, though the, the fact that Cell basically lost no life at all meant that it was kind of always going to be a rough one for Cold to come back from. So, Oasis, what did you think of this match? I was actually disappointed, to be perfectly honest. This is a match that has been fairly hyped up for almost the entirety of this, the entire li lifespan of this league, since Cold and Androids have always been in the same division for as long as I can remember. And every time they fought, it was always down to the last person, it was down to the last P2, et cetera, et cetera. So for the Androids to have such a commanding win, is definitely not to my expectations at all. 16 having such a dominant win over King Cold. Sure, to be expected, 16. This man hits 10k combos like it's nothing. But to go past that and do what he did, it's unfortunate. Uh, Super 17 being on Super Plus 2, this is a new, it is a build change. This seems to be a trend this week. Everyone's trying out new builds, and in this case, definitely was a positive change for the androids. Super 17 able to clean up for 16, or really cleaning up, but you know, finishing the pan he had left on the table with his ultimate doing 15k, 13k, something like that. He did 13k, yes. 13k, yes. And then, you know, you have 19 who is just stays in your face, takes your energy, rush B2, rinse and repeat. Essentially, the thing you needed to do versus Raccoon was shut him down, make sure he couldn't spam his max power mode B1, make sure he couldn't be spamming from long distance, and 19 did exactly that. Andrews were very prepared for this match. Sure, 17 was benched, but at the end of the day, they had the people who would stay in the in, in Cold Kingdom's face. Because let's be honest, King, uh, the Cold Kingdom's major weakness, or major flaw at least, is high melee pressure they want to stay as far away from you as they can to throw a b2s whether it's death beam or supernova etc etc but android stayed in your face the entire time it wouldn't let them throw out b2s their main source of damage so is it too uh difficult to see how they won no not really but am i disappointed in how it happened kind of i really wish this was closer match but it is what it is I will say kudos to Medicooler. He seems to be the best person to clean up for Cold Family beyond defense with two eternal life. He has the longevity to clean up any messes that might have been left over the supernova spams from the team. Unfortunately, he couldn't clean up entirely since Cell was still in the back lines waiting to get his turn. But overall, good job of the androids preparing for this match, having their men clearly set out to stay in their opponent's face. Cold Kingdom is definitely not something to be too sad about. Sure, you lost a rivalry game, but that's to be expected versus such a aggressive team. We'll bounce back, that's for sure. That's for damn sure. Yes, both being at 3-2, and two, neither are anywhere out of the league or out of their own divisions, uh, both still riding pretty high in the top there. Uh, I would say a, a moment that I would call the, the main moment that kind of sealed it for Cold Kingdom's fate was the rocket punch stopping the cooler ult, which probably would have finished off or nearly finished off 16, uh, allowing him to be much more on an even field, and it's what allowed 16 to take him down so much. So, uh, Fiora, with uh, Android 19 being in and doing a comfortable 41.4k, uh, how'd you feel about this match? <laughs> I have to agree with Oasis. I thought this was a pretty disappointing match because of how one-sided it was for in the Android's favor. Because 16 versus Cold just gave Android such a massive lead because... I think King Cold only took a bar off of 16, and 16 just straight up killed King Cold. And it was just all downhill from there for the Cold Kingdom until Metacooler arrived and really did above what I thought he would do. He took out the rest of 19, he took out the rest of 17, he forced Cell onto the field to ruin his stats, <laughs> which is always funny. It's just unfortunate how badly Cold really lost this. 
Yeah, I would uh, have to ask, seeing 19 doing these consistent performances on the build he's on, have you guys thought of maybe copying and pasting that to Jero? I know you guys have been kind of doing your own thing with him. Mm. No, we haven't really been thinking of trying to copy 19 because it's pretty clear that between Jero and 19, 19 is just the more viable option from like an in-game character standpoint. And Jero has some strengths that 19 doesn't have, like their, the difference in their B1s, for example. I, I just don't think that trying to copy-paste 19 over to Jero would work out. Agreed. I just wondered if there was anything seeing from him, if that led to any ideas, seeing how he's been more on a tank master throw build, uh, where they've kind of switched some of his other Pitaras. So... Of all, they are separate characters. Uh, there aren't really any true clone characters in this game. Uh, there might be some stock moves, but every character acts very differently, especially with the different AI. Uh, I think Oasis could uh, definitely vouch for that, being a team that's had multiple versions of Piccolo and, and none ever doing the same as another. So do you guys have any uh, final remarks to make on match number four here on Androids versus Cold Kingdom? Uh, actually, I do. Go ahead. If you ask me, this is a perfect match to look at and just think, you could have set up a better matchup. I don't know what went on behind Cold's, you know, the Cold Kingdom as they were trying to set up their lineup, but they could have gotten a better matchup for 16 if they predicted 16 being the starter at all, because it was clear... Cole, King Cold was not going to win 1v1 versus 16. If they did, you know, playing the prediction game can really make a difference in this league because a good character could end up losing if they have a bad matchup, no matter what. Well, they might have gone along the lines of King Cold's their best melee, and were just trying to match melee with melee and hoping he just basically did even with 16, and it just obviously didn't go that way. It's easy to say now that he didn't do well, but we have seen King Cold melee only down some some impressive targets over the season, so I wouldn't take too much away from them. I, I think it was a risk worth taking. It's just obvious now it ended up being a very uh, poor risk as uh, obviously it did not pay off. Oasis, are you there, buddy? I know, uh... Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. Been yeah, I was just going to say that uh, they most likely were predicting that Andrew 17 was going to start because 16 has been in the third slot for the past two weeks now. So now that 16 was back in his, you know, original slot, it was unfortunate that King Cole had to suffer his wrath. We can say all we want about, like Dorgar was saying, we can say all we want about predictions. At the end of the day, it comes down to ability and luck, honestly. Yeah, as we've seen, Cyberman can go up against strong contenders and still pull out a result. So, are you guys ready to get on to match number five then? Oh, yep. I'm ready for this. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> this was a very fun match. Uh, me and Oasis took a lot away from this match. <laughs> a very good week for me and Oasis outside of our own matches uh, with the results of our competitors here. So Sentai versus Hybrids. As you can see, Sentai got their second win and uh, over Hybrids, uh, which was probably not a team people were expecting to uh, drop here. But I mean, as we go through this match, you will see uh, quite why. Uh, so to start off, we have Ginyu versus Ultimate Gohan. So two melee monsters, Ginyu being a more recent uh, full melee uh, as the weeks have gone on. He's certainly switched between tank and melee a few times already. Um, as Oasis said, a very uh, noticeable uh, kind of theme this week is his build changes, but Sentai kind of always does that. So a very back and forth, but uh, Ginyu ends up winning the brawl, taking ultimate down with 1.5 bars left, having Sword Trunks come in. Uh, Sword Trunks uses Finish Buster to take him out, uh, having Say Woman come in. So Say Woman comes in and just spams Sword uh, out of the match, losing only one bar herself, having Kid Gohan come in. Um, so Kid Gohan comes in and forces Say Woman out uh, by losing minimal health and taking her down to 1.2 bars. Uh, so Birder comes in. There's a two-bar kid versus full health Birder on his tank build. He is sticking with that. 
um, and he ends up just immediately ulting uh, Kid Gohan. So Birder finishes off Kid, uh, only losing one bar after the ult, bringing in future Gohan. So final member of hybrids coming in, uh, taking it to Birder, um, and he takes him down to one bar before tagging, uh, going down to 1.2 bars himself, bringing in Jace, and Jace finishes the job on his super build. So Sentai takes the wind, uh, pretty dominant. They still had a Say Woman in the back, Birder left with a bar, uh, Jace was at basically full health his damage was not bad because he he did bad it was just bad because he pulled a cell and came in and basically just did a b2 for it to end um so this was probably one of the shock wins of the evening not to take anything away from sentai but hybrids have had a lot of very close matches to see them just kind of get kind of uh three three out here was a big surprise uh, especially with the amount of hp left and I know people meme about sword trunks, but he ended up being on the higher end of the damage table for their team. So it was certainly a surprise. So Oasis, what did you think of this match? Now this was a match, uh, first in part by the fact that hybrids lost, which is great for the both of us to regard. But of course we can't very much focus on that now, can we? Sentai finding their foundation in the form of Saiyan woman is a blessing Oh my goodness. I don't know if I said this on the cast before, but all they really no, all they really need to do, but all they've been looking for is a strong core. Every team needs those two numbers that can do, you know, 60k or 50, 60k if needed, if necessary, if the team starts to slouch. And they have it. Finally. Say a man, say a woman. Both are able to do that 60k when needed, when necessary consistently hopefully and that is definitely starting to show results here versus a team that has been touted as was the number two number three team in the league hybrids uh it's it's incredible honestly can you and burger showing great promise on their new builds burger especially be on his the tank build doing 40 ish k is definitely better than what he has been doing before sure we want him to be doing better 50k hopefully with you know with his rush b2 and his full energy balls for now this is a great start getting you taking out ultimate gohan is that matt is not what i had what i suspected i would expect the ultimate gohan to beat getting you his next opponent down by two bars and then a tag or die but that didn't happen and because it didn't happen i definitely have to say that was definitely a uh momentum swing for sentai uh for hybrids end though this was a weirdly bad match of four hybrids because hybrids is primarily a b2 based team three b2ers team gohan future gohan score trunks so they have two meleeers ultimate gohan kid gohan and to have an aggressive team a rush b2 team like sentai going up against them and taking out one of their primary meleeers that was it was just an unfortunate event for hybrids and just it, it was insane to be perfectly honest uh just overall great planning by sentai to be able to realize that having as many melee airs as you can to capitalize on the b2 weakness of hybrids was the key to success and then of course getting say a woman to be hopefully consistent Hopefully staying on her game, on her aggressive Rush B2 game, something that we all must consider when facing up against them later in this league. And this shows how even if a team is down by you know, three losses, they can still come back. They can still get the wins if they're creative enough, if they change enough, if they adapt enough. And this is probably one, one of the reasons why Sentai is probably one of the best teams to represent our league with how change they adapted and they they're overcoming versatility over individuality certainly exactly. a motto for sentai squad but let's not take too much away from them and let's not count hybrids out three and two is still very respectable and uh even in in our division it is still something that we have to fear uh, because we are in week five there's still 10 more matches so scores can change quite drastically uh, so Fiora, what did you think of this match here? 
this was definitely one of the most shocking matches of the week because going into this, I don't think anybody really realistically expected Sentai to be able to beat hybrids. You know, hybrids are part of West Kai, the most hyped Kai in the league, you know. Well, hybrids, they've been doing really good overall. And then you have Sentai, they've been struggling, and they had a good match, but it's not enough to say they can beat hybrids. But they did amazing. You know, Say a Woman was a phenomenal character this week. She just completely shut down store trunks, didn't give him any room to breathe or to throw out any B2s. And that just solidified Sentai's lead for the rest of the match. Yeah, I mean, it, it was certainly one where they just kind of built an advantage and they made sure to hold onto it tight. And man, it just, it kind of blossomed into just an overwhelming lead in the end. Um, but, you know, can't take too much away. I think both teams did did throw out a decent shot. It was just, as said, Sentai with their versatility. It, it's hard to plan against them because you have no idea. We've seen Jace switch from super builds to melee builds, Birder from melee to super, now to tank. Yeah, say a woman and say a man have been relatively consistent, but even then their Pataras still swap out all the time. It's almost impossible to predict what you're up against. Well, do you guys have any final remarks before moving on to match number six? Murder only tagged at the end because he wanted to screw with Jace's stats. He could have <laughs> tagged into say a woman, but no, he had to screw over his partner. <laughs> stats match. Nobody needs those, right? Well, hey, yeah, sure. Nobody cares about the All Star game. Yeah, no, not at all. Nobody. Can't wait to see what Sentai has in store for us later in the season. Yeah, oh, I'm God. taking them on next week, and I'll tell you, we are terrified. We're like, we have no idea what's going on. So, <laughs> something's gonna happen. They're gonna put people out. Uh, the birder will probably be in defense plus three. That's about it. All right. Well, you guys ready then for match number six? Oh yes. Yep. Sure. In fact, yes, match number six, the second divisional of the week. So here we have Earth Defenders versus Bujins, uh, considered two of the scariest teams in the league, uh, especially after hybrids this week. Uh, certainly was a, a close one. This was another good one uh, to go watch. There's a lot of good ones. Really, every week you should go and check them all out. Uh, and if you don't want to watch the full stream, please remember they upload the episodes individually on the YouTube channel as well. So to start, we have Evil Boo versus Yamcha, a tank versus tank uh, with lots of clashes to Boo. And with Yamcha being on a clash boost was certainly a scary one for Evil Boo. Uh, and there was even a beam clash in here. Uh, certainly surprising. Don't see those too often. We saw one earlier between Raditz and Super Saiyan Goten. Uh, but in the end, Evil Boo managed to take out Yamcha with a little bit over a bar left. Base mid Goku comes in and uh, takes out Evil Boo, but does lose a bar in the process. So Majin Boo comes in and uh, takes out or comes in to fight the three bar mid Goku. So we have a uh, spam versus spam here. Um, lots of uh, spams. And in fact, we almost get another beam clash. They just narrowly miss each other with uh, Super Kamehameha's. Uh, so, and they even both trade ults. We start with a spirit bomb, which blows up the map, and then uh, followed up by an angry explosion. So no matter what, the, the map was getting blown up. Mount Pizuru was turning into destroyed earth, uh, as some people hate. But in the end, a, a good match between these two. Um, and Majin Buu ends up finishing mid Goku off with about one bar left before Super Saiyan mid Vegeta comes in. Um, Majin Buu manages to take uh, about a bar and a half of Vegeta before going down himself, having Majub step in. So Majub comes in to fight mid Vegeta, and he only loses about a bar and a half um, before taking out mid Vegeta. But Tien comes in and just smacks him off the table. So basically an even match coming in between Kid Buu and Tien, both on take spam builds. So a very terrifying one indeed. Tien has the advantage with eternal life, though. So, ends up being a a very uh, big match. Tien blocking a Kid Buu ult and uh, a lot of spam between the two. A lot of weird interactions with spam between the two. But in the end, Kid Buu manages to uh, outpower Tien with the Super Kamehameha's going through the Dodon waves. Uh, and Bujins take the match. He had about a bar left at the end. It, it was a close one. Um, and as you can see by damage totals... Uh, it, there wasn't a lot of dilly dallying, even though there's a lot of healing and defense on both teams. Uh, it was kind of pretty quick paced. 
Um, so I don't know if there's there's much more I can add here besides just man it was a terrifying planning for it. Oasis, what did you think of this match? Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, Dorgard, how in the world does your team keep having such close divisionals? I swear, every single time. First, Hybrids was down. Sure, it was down to two bars, but it's still down to it go on versus Evil Boo. And now you had TN versus Kid Boo. Down to their last bar. How you do it, Dorgard? I'm taking notes here for my divisionals upcoming next week. I digress. Honestly, this match had me speechless because of how back and forth it was. You had uh, Yamcha versus Evil Boo. Sure, Evil Boo won because he's busted. But then he was quickly taken out by and no, sorry, Mid Goku. The deaths and the KOs was back and forth as he was normally seen in the divisional. Uh, it was just so fast-paced, you barely could keep up with it up until the very end when it was defense versus defense. Uh, I really don't have much to say outside of there are a lot of Kamehameha's this match. One, both of them, that some that connected into a beam struggle, others that just did straight damage. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, this was a match to be sure. One that, of course, Bujins came out on top with and so, uh, essentially cement that they are the scariest team in the league, regardless of what anyone else says at this point, since they've beaten hybrids and Earth Defenders in a very convincing fashion. Well, we do have a loss unlike your team here, so uh, we can't be two for certain yet. But I will tell you, don't don't diss on Yamcha too much. Uh, when we were actually reviewing the matches, Yamcha is one of their scary members. Him and TN just really pop off. So uh, that that is the hint for you, is to really keep an eye on the characters you don't think are good. Uh, so, Fiora, what did you think of this match being the other divisional of the week? Uh, first, I'm glad that Derp's matches with West Kai are already over with, except hybrids, but that's for the end. <laughs> yeah, this was an amazing match. You know, this was a very close back and forth battle throughout most of it. Bujins did hold a lead throughout, but it wasn't by a lot. And then it just came down to Majub and Kid Boo versus TN. Maju being pretty solid, and Kid Buu being one of the scariest characters in the league. It was just too much, but Tien did very good by bringing it down to a bar. Yeah, I'd say it's a, when you look at the stats, it's a very strange to think of how close it is, because uh, we've seen matches earlier where they were both teams were at 200,000 damage dealt, and here it's, a, it's like 160 to 170. You're like, man, this... It's like nothing even happened, but happened at the same time. So, yeah, I'll tell you, as a uh, Budin supporter, we have a superstition that boosts make teams lose. And Mid-Vegeta had a boost and ended up not doing very well. So uh, maybe that's <laughs> just our superstition. Always step on the field with your right foot kind of thing. Uh, but, hey, man, if, if you have enough supporters believing in it, sometimes it becomes reality. So... I guess maybe that's another thing you'll have to keep in mind, Oasis. I know you have uh, Stepin and Vibin as another active supporter. Maybe you guys need to figure out what superstitions to break before getting into your divisionals to, to help out. Though, you guys are a team that have shown boosts can very much matter in a, in a match. So, there's a lot of mentalities coming in on what works and what doesn't. And a lot of it, as we've seen with teams like Sentai... Uh, you're planning on mad switches or with Bujins, just running the same old, same old, and just switching the order up and just hoping it works. Exactly. I mean, I must say, the the fact that you didn't run that many, you didn't spend that much zenny on this match is a testament to how strong you are and how confident you are in your characters. Something that many people in this league are definitely struggling to find as they face, you know, t difficult teams, face losses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Actually, I do have a question for you, though. You were mentioning how earlier, uh, when you were preparing for this match, it was very difficult. Do you want to explain that process of how you arrived at the game plan? So one issue we had when going up is uh, we did a lot of testing against TN, especially, and he basically beat all of our characters const consistently. So planning a ender to go up against him and basically win or finish off the match was uh, a hard prospect and with how well Yamcha's been doing and the fact that just 
everybody besides mid goku has been like above 40k consistently and mid goku still doing his 40 just made it very hard to to come up with uh all right who should we have matching against who they're all quite terrifying um and uh, especially with someone like yamcha who who somehow gets into a million clashes and we being a team that also feels the superstition of clash boosts cause us to lose uh <laughs> so there's there's a lot of superstition uh on our side and it came down to just well what can we do to to best uh kind of playing out the 1v1s so i know some teams it comes down uh especially teams that tag a lot to how to utilize that but for us we we really think of it as a in a 1v1 situation if we had everybody directly fight the guy opposite can we predict their lineup and what can we do to to make those 1v1s the best uh, i think the scariest part was who to match majin buu up against since he has slower melee uh, and we we tried to put him up against mid goku and ended up working out so I think it just came down to, and that might be why the matches are so close, because maybe Maji would have done better in a different spot, but just trying to match our best guys against their best guys to, to make it to where we feel like we have the better chance of winning ends up being maybe what gives us the, the edge in the end. Makes perfect sense, honestly. Let me, oh, last question, last question. Do you think this match would have been different if you have us watch swapped Ajub and Evil Boo and or if Krillin was in the match. So I'd say we we kind of seeing Krillin's stats throughout the season, he's technically on their lower end. So uh if he had been in, not to brag, but I we we assumed we would have done even better, but uh I still think Krillin's quite a mighty uh character, but just like with Super Boo, he has a bad B2, so that he was probably always gonna be out. Yeah, we definitely considered Maju to start. Uh, we were just worried that even though he is an all-rounder and that is good into tanks, Yamcha's just been so solid lately that if uh, they get into too much fighting, that Yamcha would actually just pull it out by having that defense and still doing his damage. Where uh, Evil Boo, we, we were kind of hoping to just build a lead whenever we put him out to f first. You know, whenever you throw your trump card out first, you're kind of hoping they, they do more than just their 40. Uh, and I think that that was kind of the main idea is, hey, if we throw them out first, maybe we'll get a lead and that'll be what we can uh, survive on to. Though TN showed sometimes leads don't matter with against uh, the tri-beam or geometry as we have changed it. Gotcha. I do appreciate the answers, man. This is definitely going to help me later on down the line. <laughs> I did, and with other upcoming matches like Riz Androids, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and also help our other supporters who are trying to build for themselves, or whether it be for the first time, or veterans are just trying to get that edge in their next match. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll add a uh, builds discussion segment if we do a uh, postseason capsule cast. Uh, certainly always willing to try out new things in these casts because uh again we are here for you guys and we want to make them um and that's why me and oasis put in so much time outside of these to get everything prepared uh did you have anything else to say fiora before we move on to match number seven earth defenders should be renamed to earth destroyers with how many times goku chucks that spirit bomb <laughs> i think he's done it every match he's blown up the planet if he's able to yeah, that is certainly something that could very much happen. Maybe it'll become a team. It's just all characters with ults that blow up the map. Certainly something. We do have a team suggestion spot, so feel free to join in the Discord and throw out stuff like that. We've also thought about a team of uh, all the same voice actor. So who knows? Maybe down the line. So you guys ready then for match number seven? Mm-hmm. Alrighty then. Let's get on to Royals versus Muscle. Uh, as you can already see, uh, an interesting week. We had our first elite of the seasons. Congratulations, Prince Majin Vegeta, for being the first character to go elite in the new league. So getting it uh, to start, we have uh, Broly for muscle and Slug for royals. We have a melee versus tank build. Broly sticking with the melee for the second week in a row. Um, and both really slugging it out. Uh, not to say a pun here, but... Uh, both even transforming when they're on their last bar and both also tagging when they're on their last bar. Uh, so funny enough, we end up uh, pretty quickly into Mecha Frieza versus Super Saiyan Truck. So still nobody dead, both characters transformed and tagged. Um, and this became a super matchup both on Super Plus build. So Mecha uh, only manages 
to uh, tank one bar before going down to one bar himself on Super Saiyan Trunks and tagging. So now we have a two bar or three bar Super Saiyan Trunks against the uh, Pilaf machine coming in. So Pilaf comes in, gets an ult blocks, does what he can uh, and takes Trunks down to slightly over a bar before being taken out by the, the uh, Super Saiyan Sun. And uh, Slug comes back in, uh, transformed, and takes out Trunks. Um, or he attempts to take out Trunks, but he manages to tag with less than a bar left. So Bojack comes in, and uh, after several or an ult and several max power mode spams, uh, manages to <laughs> whittle down the giant that was uh, Slug, uh, only losing minimal life in the meantime. Mecha comes back in and hits uh, Bojack square in the face with a Supernova for 17k. So yes, we are back to Supernova Mecha. Um, and he gets taken out when he's actually doing the follow-up instant B1. He tried to go for a second ult instantly, but gets just slapped uh, by a... a trap shooter of all b2s uh so majin vegeta comes in last character for royals has a cup two one health bar characters and a full health 13 and this is where he goes elite uh take doing a 102k damage so he loses about a bar per character so he takes out bojack losing a bar uh full health android 13 comes in even transforming gaining health back um, and takes a bar off Majin Vegeta before going down. Super Saiyan Trunk comes back in with a bar and gets taken down. And finally, a two-bar legendary Super Saiyan Broly comes in uh, and actually narrowly takes him out, but ends up going down himself. So a less than one-bar Majin Vegeta stands victorious at the end with Royals with the comeback win. So exciting match, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> starts off a little slow with all the tags and uh, certainly plenty of transformations this match, but in the end, uh, we certainly saw a, a elite performance for the ages, and you do have to hit the 100k, and he just did. So, Oasis, what were your thoughts on this match? Well, first of all, I'll start with saying what everyone's thinking. Muscle was robbed. <laughs> Muscle was robbed wide <laughs> at the end of this match just by Majin Vegeta showing why he is such a dominant force in this league and why he has the nickname Majin GG. Just uh, let's start off with Muscle. Muscle has done a fantastic job keeping up with the trend of build changes. They changed their build in week four, and those showed off to be a very worthwhile investment as they defeated androids. And they continue to do they continue to do well here in their match versus Royals. They had a three bar or three man uh, advantage state before Majin Vegeta came in. And anyone with eyes could see that this match was particularly over before Vegeta came in. But then Vegeta, he, I mean, this man had almost everything to counter Muscle. He had Tower Body, he had Jahanic Aura, he had quick B2s, he had quick melee. And then add on the fact that 13 hasn't been performing the best and that Trunks was already weakened, and that Broly has a is a slow, me slow meleeer in defense plus one. Apparently, this was just a perfect storm for Vegeta to just dominate. Because this man didn't even lose two bars, I believe. He had at least no, he like went a down sliver. to his last bar. Yeah, he, he okay, okay. was barely alive in the end. Gotcha. Okay, at least he's even that strong. Thank goodness. But He had a yeah. full last bar, though. Oh. Oh, well, damn. Yeah. I mean, I, still, yeah. the point is, <laughs> Vegeta, uh, this team set him up to, I guess, sweep, if that makes sense. The man had all the tools needed, and he just needed to execute, and he executed to perfection and took the game, and, just, and like I said, stole the game from Muscle. Honestly, I would be more critical towards the Royals and their performance than Muscle was, even though they lost, because Muscle, they were working like a unit. They were being their man, doing their damage. Everything was going well until Majin Vegeta came out. So I wouldn't change a thing. Honestly, this there's not a single other person in this league I know of that can perform to the same level as Majin Vegeta right now. Or can do the exact same thing Majin Vegeta did here versus them again. So definitely keep what you have right now and run with that 
because it is working. As I would say, ignore this fluke, so to speak. But, but overall, great job, Muscle. The builds have been working consistently. Job Royals for creating a monster. He will most likely carry you for a long, long time. Yeah. As frustrating as it may have been, I mean, an elite performance is still an elite performance, and it could have happened at any time on any character, and, and no matter what, there would have been discussions of it. So, Majin Vegeta may have been a higher pick with uh, how consistent he has been, but he has had his off weeks as well. So, But yeah, as said, I, I think Muscle really has their team down. I know that it was a little unfortunate in the end, but even 13, even though he, he didn't quite... <laughs> do what they were hoping he would do there he still ended up doing a lot more than he has in a few other weeks and i think he's he's filing into place a bit more uh so fior what did you have to say about this this match going into this match i didn't really know who would win because they both have some pretty strong and weak members on both sides like you know the royals they have maja vegeta they also have pilaf and muscle they have broly who's been pretty good overall they also have Roshi and 13, who have not as bad as Pilaf, but they're not too particularly good, you know? And by the time it was just down to Majin Vegeta, I thought it was over for the Royals. I knew that Majin Vegeta was, you know, he was the number one in the league even before this week. But I didn't think he would be able to pull out a win because he would have to go elite. And he, he dug deep, he went as hard as he could and just... Pull the W for his team. Yeah, I mean, I, it, there's not a lot more that really needs to be said on, on Majin Vegeta, but, I mean, I think the, the sad part is how many olds Bojack's been throwing and just not quite connecting, and, and they really are on the cusp of uh, greatness, and 3-2 and 2-3 are both very good scores, even in their divisions, uh, so neither team is in or out because of this match, and it was a non-divisional, so it doesn't impact their standings as much, so both still have bright futures ahead going into week six. Are you guys ready to get going on to the final match of the week, match number eight? Yeah. Oasis, are you good to go, brother? Did he disconnect again? Might be uh, lagging a I little. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds like the perfect time turn. to go to uh, week eight, since I will do the recap while you are uh, getting things reloaded in. So I will move on to that right away. So... Match number eight, final match of week number five. We have Resurrected Warriors versus Namek. Uh, I will take this a little slower to get Oasis back as we will want to hear from him, uh, but there will be no rush on that. So to start off, we have Videl versus Tambourine. So two melee monsters going at it. Videl more of a B2 melee monster, but still a melee monster nevertheless. Uh, Tambourine decided to ignore all of that and just absolutely smash Videl, only losing one bar in return. Uh, so kind of like the same thing with Androids versus Cold earlier today. Uh, next comes in Android 18 and instantly ults Tambourine for about 18,000. But a one bar Tambourine managed to stick into her face and takes her down to one bar before tagging. Uh, so Nail comes in to... Um, fight the very low health android 18 and actually fails to finish her off before she tags so aider comes in to take her place now we have uh two kind of tink monsters for both teams going uh head to head uh, and nail actually falls behind here tagging when he gets to one bar after only taking one bar of aider so king piccolo comes in to try to help out um and manages to take out Aider, only losing a bar and a half in return. So early Piccolo comes in for Resurrected Warriors, coming to get a rematch against his old team, um, and nearly replicates King uh, Piccolo's performance of taking out him and only losing about a bar and a half. Uh, so Nail comes back in and takes on early Piccolo, um, and actually, surprisingly enough, with his eternal life, actually manages to regen more life uh, and have more than when he initially left. Um, so early Piccolo goes down, 18 comes back in and nail tags after taking a bar going down to less than half a bar, bringing in late Piccolo, uh, 18 takes on, takes late Piccolo down to about 1.5 bars near instantly, but ends up getting taken out. So Namek has moved to still the only undefeated team at five and O and resurrected warriors to two and three, um, 
Honestly, I wouldn't say it was too bad of a, a bout for Resurrected Warriors. I, I would say uh, it, it stinks that Videl only managed to do a bar. And even though early Piccolo stats don't look fantastic, he certainly did put in a quality performance. But, man, Namek's still just holding the reins. Uh, though they did have a selfish tag at the end for late Piccolo to basically ruin his stats very Cell-like uh, this week. So, quite frustrating uh, stats-wise, especially going to All-Star with late being one of their favorites. But, uh, great performance by Tambourine. So, uh, Oasis, have you uh, kind of gotten things uh, back under control? <laughs> Yes, I've turned my mic back on. Imagine that. Uh, All right, then. <laughs> take it away. This is your match. Yes, this match was honestly not as hard to prepare for as other matches. Not to say Resurrect Wars are easy or anything. Not definitely saying anything but that. But we already assumed that Mod uh, Mid Vegeta would, no, sorry, End Vegeta. <laughs> this is an ED. And Vegeta would be out because he's their last bench. He hasn't been benched yet, so sure, he'd be out. Uh, the only person then they would start is Videl. And who on our team has the best chance against Videl? Well, it's our eternal starter, Tambourine. And look how well that turned out. Uh, not much to say outside of 18 really did her best versus Lake Pickle. Lake Pickle struggled way more than I thought he would versus Android 18. I would assume it's because she's an android and she does a lot of, a lot of damage with her b2s uh but outside of that the team reservoir warriors didn't do too much that i would be afraid of tambourine doing 70k is definitely not what i planned for but it's definitely welcome yeah that, that's 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 all i gotta say the only thing i have to, well besides this that's this match uh People have been saying Namek is a strong team. I don't think we're that strong. We've boosted twice. Uh, we've been lucky once, maybe twice, along with that. So that's four out of five matches thus far. So are we really as good as, say, Bujins, Earth Defenders, and the rest of the West kind? No, not really. Uh, did we get lucky here? Yes, we did. And do you think, and do I think we're going to keep up our win streak? Win streak? Absolutely not. Especially if it's next week. No, Muscle's going to take it as I'll explain later. But yeah. I mean, looking back, you did have a narrow victory against Derp, uh, where they had a two-on-one and Nuova managed to pull it back. So there is certainly a bit of luck involved, especially with an AI-focused lead. Uh, I mean, a few moments of Android 18 ulted instead of doing a max range Destructo disc uh, after doing the Super Unyielding Spirit, and a few other moments, it... it would have been even closer uh, of a match because in the end uh, there was a one health bar nail and a 1.5 health bar late piccolo so it certainly was not a, a stomp by any means even though technically it was a 2-0 exactly so uh, Fiora what did you think of this match here going into this match I honestly did expect Namek to take the win because in my opinion, Resurrected Warriors are in a similar position of GT, where they're a fairly new team, especially with that specific team composition, so they would have some stuff to work out, whereas Namek has been here from the very beginning, and Namek has just been solid throughout the season. They're the only undefeated team for a reason. Boost and lungs, and my I, friend. Uh, Boost and lungs. <laughs> and I honestly... Don't have a lot to add. Yeah, that pure just boost the luck stat. <laughs> just spend twenty zenny to lower the difficulty of the opponents. <laughs> I mean, it works. I mean, we really can't take anything away from Resurrect Warriors. Early pick low stat wise may not look great, but he certainly pulled out a good uh, showing. Um, so even for being an ex Namekian uh, teammate, he still has done well. Aider obviously doing his and eighteen again. One or two, maybe, if she did the other B2 or the ult or something. Certainly was a good showing, and uh, as Oasis will always say, his team just barely managed to get through. But that will not stop people from being terrified when going against you, because if you just look at the win-loss, especially uh, for more casual people checking it out, it, you guys will just straight-up look scary. It's just a matter of fact uh, with how the league is run. Fair enough. I will say this, though. If Reservoir Resurrect the Warriors would... Uh, this advice for early piccolo 
he definitely is a strange one to work with. He, as you already know, he does one thing one week, something the next, and does terrible next week. I definitely have found more success on defense plus and key plus two. Maybe try to look into that. Also, if you could possibly, possibly get uh, Ader on Savior, uh, save you a lot of pain, a lot of trouble because of his power body in max power mode. But that's, that's just a little bit of advice. Don't have to take it. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, the build part of this league is ever evolving. And the fact that you can change it at any moment uh, certainly allows for some some uh, great ways to, to change it up. So uh, all advice is good advice. Uh, just got to keep in mind that every team has many supporters. And honestly, it's terrifying to think that even uh, with our ideas, there are some other ideas that will pop out of the woodworks and just absolutely change it up in their next matchup. So impossible to predict. Uh, but yet we have to for the each week. Get even crazier next season when uh, free agents come back in. Oh, boy. That's well, something to look forward to. Are you guys ready to move on to the next segment then? Oh, yes. My yep. favorite part. Well, before predictions, uh, we are going to test this out this week. I would love to hear in the comments in the Discord. Uh, this week, we are going to be looking at, and if you've been in the Discord, you'll know, uh, we have the power rankings and tier list. Now, the power rankings are taking the place, so every character is ranked from uh, 1 to 100 basically based on the average damage and the damage they dealt of the week and taking their place. So if you have someone who's number one, 13, 57, and, and 73, and add it up, what is their, their total ranking, uh, as well as a few other stats pulled in, and that's how you get these power rankings. So as you can see, Bujin, Stamic, Earth Defender, still in the top three, and going down the list. So even though GT won this week, overall, a few of their characters have struggled a little bit more, pulling them further down. Uh, and same with a few other teams. Uh, hybrids surprisingly lower, so even though they are 3-2 and two and, and in positive standings, as you can see, the power rankings can put them down. So it shows that really no team can be counted out at any moment because anybody can shoot up and down. Cold Kingdom was at the top for the first two weeks. Uh, and of course, the tier list is just something fun where it takes the, the stats of this week and puts into what characters normally do so as you can see uh cello cell and late piccolo may have uh not done great this week but in terms of what they've done so far they're as good as the sopranos before season six so just some fun here uh and as always there's a lot more that goes on and these lists come out every week uh within a few days of the season or the uh the matches ending so feel free to join in on the discussion uh, is there anything you guys want to talk about when it comes to the tier list and power ranking? Let's see. Uh, I mean, the power ranking looks accurate to me, except for, you know, Cold Kingdom being that low, hybrids be How in the world is hybrids that low? Sure, they lost to Sentai. They shouldn't be that low. I'm pretty sure it's because uh, both their losses had some really bad score points, unfortunately, uh, which uh, lowered their averages to a degree. Yeah, like I Kid Gohan did guess. basically nothing versus Evil Boo, and Sentai was pretty dominant over hybrids this week. I, I guess, but it, I it does not, not reflect well on their stats. Yeah, it's true, why the power true. rankings fun to look at, but not entirely accurate. Right. I mean, this just in my opinion, I would expect hybrids to at least be like middle of the pack, not that far down. I would definitely, if I had my own power ranking, I would definitely put Muscle up a bit higher because of the changes they have made and because of how potent the changes have been. Uh, cinema is probably a bit lower, but that's besides the point. Everything else looks good. Yeah, I mean, Except a lot of teams time. have moved around, as said before. Cold Kingdom was number one for uh, at least the first two weeks. So it's right. certainly something that this is just a, a freeze frame in time and not accurate. And it really only is for week five. And as each week goes on, because I know Bujins was three and four for a good while. And now we are number one. And Namek was mm -hmm. also like right there below. And now we both have jumped up. So it shows that you can never really be too certain um, and if you, if you just look at the numbers, yeah, at the top, it's it's pretty far from the bottom. But at the bottom, from 15 to 10, it's not that big of a difference. Pretty easy to move around in that. And even just like 5 to 10 is all within like 10 points. So it is incredibly easy to move in here. 
True. I didn't even notice that, honestly. Yeah, the numbers are not really that far apart. Um, it's 100 in total, but that doesn't take a lot to get around, especially when a few sections are 10-point differences. Uh, and in terms of the tier list, I, I said it, it's a fun part. Uh, sometimes there's a Sword Trunks tier for where Sword Trunks is doing Sword Trunks things. He managed to jump out of that tier as of late, uh, having a couple good performances. But, I mean, characters really jump around. And seeing as how it's impossible to make a list without opinions, that is why it's meant to be more of a for fun list as to not aggravate anybody. Because, you know, the Goon Squad has some characters that some weeks will be incredible and some weeks are goons. Uh. <laughs> yeah, like Scatter almost went elite versus Derp. He was overall pretty solid, but then you have him do a thousand, which just ruins his perception. Yeah, I agreed. Well, would you guys still like uh, to move on then to the predictions here? Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, this right. is going to be rushed. <laughs> I don't think it will be. I mean, if you don't I'm have much to say, just up. say your sentence and move on. So. For oh, no, match I mean, number like, one. The actual predictions itself. Like, yeah, I agree. You're you're it can be hard. hard. Don't you worry. I get them wrong very often, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. So, <laughs> week six, match number one, Namek versus Muscle. Um, I believe that Namek will be pulling through. Uh, they have Nuova potentially coming back in. Um, and, you know, of all the characters looking rough, Bojack's been the most rough. And uh, especially with how he's been lately, I just feel like if he is still in, it's just not necessarily easy. But I think Namek might be able to just spam out a, a match. But it will be quite difficult with all the transformations. So my vote is for Namek. My vote is definitely for Muscle. <laughs> As I said before, Muscle has all the tools to destroy us, honestly. If Bojack will be in, Roshi will be in. Most likely, Super Saiyan Trunks will be out. But... Regardless, I do think that the muscle will take it. Bojack will hit at least three ults. Always going to transform. Uh, 13 is going to do at least 50k. I'll add that all together, and you have a win. I, I mean, we can't really, we don't have any uh, counter pick, counter offense, I guess, versus power body versus their spam versus their strong offense. Overall, muscle is probably going to win. All right, so one Namek, one Muscle. Uh, Fior, what do you think for this match? It would also go down to who ends up getting benched, if you ask me, because if Muscle ended up, say, benching Bojack, for instance, who is their weak link, and I think he's one of the bottom-ranked characters in terms of average damage, then I could definitely see them pull a win, but at the same time, they might not. I could honestly see it go either way. All right, so you're going to pull yeah, for that be a... Indecisive? Indecisive, all right. So undecided on match number one for week six. A good start. Uh, moving on to match number two, we have Earth Defenders or Earth Destroyers versus the Cold Kingdom trying to regain their mojo, uh, both blowing up planets and blowing up teams. Um, both coming off a loss, so we might see some changes. We might see them just putting out a strong lineup since they are both very strong teams and both at three and two as well um i would have to say that uh, earth defenders might just have it uh they have a lot of rush down and such and as I said earlier cold can struggle a little bit with that being a more b2 heavy team so i'm gonna give it to earth defenders yeah honestly that's fair i was about to say cold but i, I was going to say cold if they kept in a cooler and have frieza in those two together I feel like would have been a great combo versus ED. But now that you mention it, with the amount of melee potential that ED has on their side of the field, mid, mid Vegeta, Yamcha, Krillin, Tien, I definitely think Earth Defenders have an advantage, and I think they'll come out on top. All right, and Fiora, what do you think of this match? I'd have to give this to Earth Defenders because overall they've been a lot more consistent with their general matches that pretty much any character on their team can do extremely well. Like Yamcha, Tien, Vegeta, Goku, pretty much anybody can do really well with the Earth Defenders. Whereas Cold has been struggling a bit more and has been less consistent and has had harder losses. So I'd give this to Earth Defenders. 
yeah, I think Cold has some good consistency, but Earth Defenders have 60k consistency versus 40k consistency. So still very, very good match. Uh, will be a fun start to the week, Namek and Muscle, Earth Defenders, Cold. So match number three, we have GT versus Cinema. Uh, this is our divisional of the week, the only one. Um, this is going to be a tough fight. Uh, GT getting a win, Cinema coming off a divisional, going into another divisional. Uh, I honestly think what well, GT's got Super Baby coming back, and the fact that they've shown they're willing to change uh, means that he might come back and might be like the preseason Super Baby that was terrifying and everybody was worried about. So I'm going to give it to GT just because they, they're they looking like they've hit their groove, and it might be a hard one to stop at this point. I would say, I mean, I would assume that Pan's going to be benched here. If she's not benched and doesn't have her build change, I'll give it to Cinema. And regardless, I'm probably going to still give it to Cinema because if Gogeta does what he did versus Derp here and Foster's in and Carl and Tarlet, it's a wrap. That's all I can say. Cinema probably has this. They have Foster, they have Garlic, they have Trellis. Yeah. Let's keep in mind it is week six. So uh, if, if you've already subbed out one character per uh, week, then it is a reset so you can have any character out. So it's extremely hard to predict who will be in and who will be out. So uh, Fiora, what did you think of, or what do you think will happen in match uh, three of week six? I see Cinema winning this because overall they've just been the more consistent team. They've been getting more Ws. They haven't lost as hard as GT. Well, yes, GT did improve from this week. It could just end up being a flash in the pan. You know, it could just be an outlier where they just performed really well for them. Meanwhile, with Cinema, you know, they, they've just been solid overall. And I just, if they're on top of their game, I can't see GT pulling a win. <laughs> So two for Cinema, one for GT. Is a divisional though, so we could see all kinds of nonsense with boosts and build changes and such. So moving on to match number four, we have Sentai versus Bujins. Um, as I was saying before in our for a divisional today, we do a lot of prediction-based 1v1s. And Sentai is a team you can basically not do that with because they've started every character. They've anchored... Uh, uh, almost all of their characters their builds change so often so as a Bujin supporter I have to give it to Bujins but man I'm terrified to see uh, what Sentai is going to come out with uh, Oasis what do you think of this match oh Dorga I think you're going to win this by a mile because you're the Bujins what can I say sure uh, Sentai brings out say a man say a woman it'll definitely be a close match with all their rushes but at the end of the day, Kamehameha is the best B2 in the game, so Bujins will win. And Fiora, what do you think for uh, match number four? I have to hand this to the Bujins easily. They've just been so much stronger as a team than Zentai has. Now granted, Zentai has definitely been improving, and I would definitely say they have a higher chance at winning compared to GT versus Cinema. But it's, it's the Bujins. They're... Near top of the league, they've just always done extremely well. They have really strong characters, really strong building. I just can't see Bujins not winning this. Well, we have a 3-0 Bujins and Sentai, but as with any match and as we've seen, uh, upsets can happen. So moving on to match number five, we have Rugrats versus Budokai. Um, this one, both teams uh, may have maybe coming off uh some craziness with this beginning of the season but uh i think both have shown a great ability to grow um i think i might just have to give this to uh to go with rugrats uh, i think even with nam coming back in rugrats have just been having a lot of characters step out of their shells such as cyberman and such that it's just they they're just becoming a little bit more of a unit and uh, i think that might be enough to give them the advantage over budokai I definitely think this is an even matchup uh, up until Cell Jr. versus Nom. Uh, Nom will definitely be, I think, will beat Cell Jr. And then he will go on to beat the Rugrats. Uh, I mean, if they bench early, oh, I don't know why they would bench early Goku here, but if they did, then that would be the Budokai's strongest lineup versus, you know, Trunks or Raleigh. 
And I do think the melee pressure from Budokai is a lot stronger than B2 potential of Trunks and the Demon Child or Raleigh. So I think Budokai will take this hands down. All right, and Fiora, what do you think of uh, Rugrats versus Budokai? This is a pretty tough matchup to call because, you know, Nam is overall a pretty solid character. But at the same time, you know, Rugrats have Kid Trunks, who, as we saw this week, can, on a whim, just annihilate a person. Overall, I would have to give this to the Rugrats, just because they feel a lot more consistent and they've even been making improvements like Cyberman, I think, has been able to do that person's worth of damage two weeks in a row, which I don't think anybody really expected from the little guy. Whereas Budokai has early Goku, who is the worst in the league right now from just looking at stats. Alrighty then, well, I think this is just a contentious match in the end, so it'll be interesting to see uh, who wins. Almost feels like a divisional uh, with how we're talking about it. So moving on to match number six, <laughs> we have Royals versus Hybrids. Uh, I think this is going to be a very a very interesting match. Uh, and without knowing who's going to be out, it's going to be very hard to, to see who will be going at it. Uh, but I think I'm going to have to go with... Uh, Royals as hybrids will probably have sword trunks in since they have a divisional the next week and we'll have them out then so they will not have them out here so unless Majin Vegeta is out for uh, whatever reason I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, a Royals victory I would at the end of the day I think if you take away all the fluff the match is going to be between Team Gohan and Majin Vegeta and with how Team Gohan has and usually good melee for a spammer, I think he would be able to push back Majin Vegeta at least enough to be able to, you know, do the do damage to the rest of the Royals. I would give this to hybrids. Just off the fact that Team Gohan is going to be in, throwing out 10k Masenkos, throwing out his Rush B2, possibly transforming, and then you know, you know where that leads. Yeah, certainly uh gonna be a battle of the the macho men. Fjord, what do you think of uh, Royals versus Hybrids? If I were to go into who's the overall stronger team, I would give it to Hybrids, because while well, they have had hard losses as a whole, they've been stronger than the Royals, just member the member. With the exception of Majin Vegeta, who is just absolutely ridiculous. You know, number one in the league, averaging at over 80,000 damage. If Majin Vegeta is in, Royals will always have a shot. And I honestly can't say either way. Yeah, certainly. They both certainly could see a Pilaf versus Sword Trunks uh, matchup as well. So could be fun. <laughs> so sounds like another <laughs> even even matchup here. And, uh, you know, I honestly hope that happens because I think that would be absolutely hilarious. So moving on to match <laughs> number seven, we have Resurrected Warriors versus Kaiju. Um, I, I think... Kaiju would have this a lot easier if they were on their home map, but being a way uh, and not having the transformations will be hard. But even if they have both of their transformation guys in, I think it might be enough to give them the advantage as that just completely nullifies the rush focus of a few Res Resurrected Warriors characters. Um, I just think they, they, they're they going to find some way to turn around some of their weaker characters. This might be a Scatter Vegeta week, we'll, we'll see. So I'm going to have to give it to Kaiju just barely. Then this is a hard match because Bardock's going to be back in. Skyler Vegeta is probably going to be in versus RW with you know early Piccolo and a couple of other people. I if this was on Kaiju's home map, this would be an easy Kaiju win. But since it's not, I'm willing to give it to Resurrected Warriors simply because that transformations won't be as common. It won't be everybody transforming. It'd only be like one or two people at best. So Videl will still be able to use her Rush B2s. 18 will still be able to hit with her ultimate for the most part. And Pickle will still be able to use his Rush B2 if he chooses to use B2s at all. So I think RW definitely has a shot here. All right, and Fiora. Um, 
honestly, I, it comes down to whether or not N. Vegeta would show up and do re really well. Because he has a very good toolkit against apes. Because, you know, you guys have been talking about, you know, how effective the ape transformations will be. While I'm thinking and Vegeta has an amazing matchup against them because they're such enormous targets for his entirely Blast B2 arsenal. And because of that, I would have to give the advantage to the Resurrected Warriors. All right, so we have 2-1 Resurrected Warriors to Kaiju, uh, but an interesting match nonetheless. Uh, I believe it's on, I think it's a Wasteland or Desert, whatever the one is with all the rocks and stuff. So that'll be interesting as well. That can block desert. a lot of B2s. Yeah. So, Direct, yeah, it's Desert. Moving on to the final match, we have Derp versus Androids. Uh, easy win for Derp, obviously. Uh, it's just Androids are so evil. Devil Might Beam will kill two at a time. No. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's like you kind of have to give it to, to Androids after how impressive they did against, uh, against Cold, and especially just with how dominant they have been. But I certainly can't count Derp out of the match, but it, it's just kind of hard since... Uh, even though it's not on Glacier, they still have to deal with the fact that the androids don't charge and will rush down. And it could just be a very difficult uh, thing to, to deal with right now. And they don't really have any characters that are like, oh, I hope, you know, they're, they're going to sub this guy out because they're weak. They've kind of been showing up as a squad. Yeah, exactly. Androids have just been a great unit. Great team mode from all of them for this past five weeks. At least we know Derp won't have to deal with Jero doing 12k this week. As I am, I mean, sure, Fiora could probably tell me wrong. He's probably out <laughs> and he can't absorb anyone's energy except for Cell. And I know you wouldn't want Jero versus Cell, anyways. So I would definitely think you go bring the strongest line up here. I still give it to Androids regardless because 16's a monster. What can we say? Uh, Derp has a chance. Non Glacier, they could do it. 16's a monster, so I give it to Androids. Yeah, as much as I would love for Derp to pull a win, it's not happening. Not just because Androids have overall been a better team with overall better members. Like, uh, come on, Derp has two people in the bottom 10 of the damage rankings. But because of one specific character that, in my eyes, hard counters Team Derp as a team. 16. His insane melee damage will just neg Salza as a tank. I doubt Kabito could beat him 1v1. He only takes 6,000 from Devil Might Beam, which is just awful for Devil Man. Jero is Jero. The only character we have that has a good matchup against 16 is the champ, but... He's not guaranteed to fight him. I just have to give this to the androids. Alrighty then. Well, we have a depressing 3-0. Uh, <laughs> the final prediction, but... You know, just like with oh, every another week... Another thing, uh, if you... One last thing. Derp is the home team for Match 8. If you believe in superstitions, nobody on the home team during Match 8 has won, so that's another thing against us. Yes, yeah, so that is a superstition issue here. Uh, so, kind of terrifying. <laughs> Sorry. Same with Match 6. Go ahead, so, Match 6, I guess that should have gone in, and hybrids should have been my vote since Match 6 always gets won by the, the away team as well. So, certainly some superstition uh, still a fun week, even with only one divisional. I think there are a lot of good matchups. Um, so, will be a lot of fun to to watch and, and commentate on next week. Uh, do you guys have any final remarks then? No. No, I don't have anything else to say. Except that it's been great to be here and uh, discuss this with you. Yeah, thank you very much for being on this week. Uh, same to you, Oasis, as always. Uh, this has been Capsule Cast Week 5. Please check uh, the description down below. We'll have the timestamps. We will have the Discord where you will see all of the fun uh, tier lists and such, and uh, a link to the website as well, which will have links to stats where you can see. I mean, we track everything from B1s, B2s, clashes all over the place. So there's a lot if you want to get technical, and a lot if you just want to enjoy casually. Uh, otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day.